Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Um, I am so glad to be joining you today with a topic that I know will interest you. This is our Live with CCO. We're in episode number 86. And um, the Live with CCOs are more casual. We have a lot of fun. We answer questions along the way. Uh, so feel free to make a comment in the, um, the chat. Let us know where you're from. And if you have any questions, and I'll keep an eye on the screen uh, to answer those as we move forward. I wanted to let you know that we are so close to our 100. Can you believe that? 100 episode of our CCO Lives or Live with CCO. We enjoy those so much. The topic that we're going to cover this time is medical coding scenarios and solutions for EM. You know, uh, I think that EM is uh, evaluation and management is so much easier than it used to be. It makes more sense to me now, and hopefully it does for you as well. Uh, we're going to dive in and look at some scenarios and solutions, and I'm going to try to simplify it as much as possible. Uh, we're, we're, um, I'm going to come at it with a little bit of a different angle and uh, kind of go it, through it quickly, but help you rule out um, and, and give some key words to um, show you whether it's going to be a level two, three, four, or five. Uh, we're going to um, look at both established and new patients, but know that the ENM leveling is the same for those. The first thing we're going to talk about is that. Um, you know, how do we look at EM now? The EM is based on time and medical decision making. We are not going to talk about the time right now. We're going to focus in on medical decision making because, quite honestly, time is easy. You know, you either spent 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, however, do know that if you say that you spent 30 minutes with the patient, you know, as the provider, you still have to justify that time. You know, you're not going to spend 30 minutes with the patient trying to clean cerumen out of their ears, most likely. You're, you're not going to get that elevated level um, unless you can give a reason why, and that's not going to be justifiable in most cases. So uh, again, you can use time. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's pretty self-explanatory. We don't have to spend a lot of time going over how to to uh, level time with ENM. Medical decision making, on the other hand, is a little more uh, time consuming, but not difficult. We're going to simplify it by saying, you know, the medical decision making is what's wrong with the patient and the care surrounding those diagnoses that the patient has. That's what medical decision making or MDM is based on. And time, the time the provider spends with the patient, simplify it boil it down to that. Uh, there is a, a lot of other things that we can talk about, even if you open up and look at the MDM uh, office matrix or whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, the uh, leveling uh, paperwork and stuff, that can get difficult looking at it. Um, I can just show you really quickly. I use the one for um, uh, this one is very, very nice to use if you want to use a uh, find a code. Your encoder may have one as well, but they're all the exact same information. We have a free one on uh, cco.us. Just go to the freebies and you'll be able to find it there in the freebies uh, and use it as a tool. Hi to everybody that's saying hello. I'm looking forward to talking to you about this subject as well. We're going to, again, I use that term, let's boil it down. Let's get to the simplified version of how we do ENM now. Uh, what is wrong with the patient, the diagnoses, and the care surrounding di those diagnoses? We will be looking at new and established patient. You still divide that up. However, the leveling is the same. So it, you know, yes, it is important, but when you look at the side-by-side -side in the um, 
MDM tools, you'll see that the 99202 carries the same criteria as a 99212, which is uh, an established patient when 2002 is a new patient. One thing uh, after you've decided that it's a new or an established patient, uh, you need to determine how many diagnoses that the patient has. That's the first step. You know, does the patient only have one diagnosis? Hypertension. Do they uh, cerumen in the ears? You know, something like that. Well, how many diagnoses the patient has? Because that will help you determine the medical decision making. Next, what are the conditions of the diagnoses? And then last, what's being done about the diagnoses? These are the questions that you have to ask yourself. If you have a piece of paper, write this down. So new or, an, new or established, how many diagnoses, the condition of the diagnoses, and what's being done about the diagnoses. What do I keep repeating? Diagnoses. It truly has a lot to do with the diagnoses, so it, it, which tickles me to death now because you know that I love diagnosis coding. And the way we do ENM makes sense uh, based on medical decision making, how sick the patient is, how many diagnoses are is the P, uh, provider uh, managing and taking care of. Now, we can come up with a lot of scenarios. And uh, just to highlight, I uh, listed off some of them. And while we're talking, I want you to kind of think about it. But we, you know, without having any more content, you know, just off the top of your head, excuse me, uh, if a person has a common cold, what do you think? think that's going to level out at is, you know, and, and let's just say we're working with established patients again. Uh, what if a person has osteoarthritis or the next patient comes in with diabetes and asthma? What about a patient that comes in with COPD, hypertension, and CKD? They have three diagnoses or four di uh, diagnoses, diabetes, CKD, CHF, hypertension. What about a patient that's seen uh, after a stroke without residual? or someone uh, fractures a toe, or they get a new diagnosis. So these are little scenarios that you can think out of uh, off the top of your head. And let's discuss, uh, as we move along, the disease process that surrounds a list like this. So we're not thinking, you know, how many parts of the exam that was done? What was the social history or the, the family history or, or personal history that was done? Uh, you know, how many body systems did the provider get into? You know, how many tests were done? How many prescriptions were done? You know, we're going to look at it from a different viewpoint. So let's just jump right in. I'm going to tell you that um, this little grid I made myself, uh, they're all green and that this is going to be a 99212. You chat in the comments and let me know if you agree with it. But let's talk about it first. I'm going to just read it out. So Jenny is an eight-year-old seen after previous bilateral otitis media 14 days prior. Mother states medication was completed and she stated everything was going well until Jenny started to complain of nasal congestion again. No fever was noted. Mucosis membranes, uh, slight irritation with drainage, no redness in throat, ears clear and tubes intact. Continue over the counter or Clarendon for congestion is needed. Now, I'm saying that with the information that we're given here, again, we're not seeing the whole report and everything, but just on this scenario, I pick it as a level two. Do you agree with me? And if not, why would you think that it's not a level two? I'm curious as to what you're thinking. I'm going to talk through my thought process as we go now. The first thing that I am uh, uh, want to know is how many diagnoses does the patient have? Well, they really only have one diagnosis, a little nasal congestion, right? And then the next thing I want to know is what are they doing about it? Well, you know, they looked, um, they've already finished their antibiotic 
And we know the patient had tubes in their ears, but that's, you know, obviously they have this uh, routinely and the mother's concerned about it, uh, but no prescription was given. Uh, directed to use, uh, continue to use over-the-counter Claritin, which is very safe for kids. Uh, and so this could be a seasonal thing. It doesn't state that, but, you know, that will help with, with that drainage. And Tylenol over-the-counter is needed. There's no fever, no concern. Uh, it looks like everybody is agreeing, you know, this is a 212. Now, this could have been a full page of information about the past history of the patient having tubes in their ears, recurrent um, otitis media, which the patient is eight. They're probably kind of outgrowing that stage when children, you know, have frequent uh, in encounters with otitis media, uh, you know, but overall, the really there's one diagnosis because the otitis media is resolved. You can't count that. So what is the one diagnosis? Nasal congestion. And the only other thing, uh, overall healthy patient uh, with um, very low to, you know, uh, level straightforward to low medical decision making, go ahead and uh, continue the Claritin. And if you need Tylenol. Right. So everybody pretty much agrees with me, it looks like. And, uh, you know, kind of a no brainer there. Right. <laughs> we didn't have to think too hard. All right. Let's check the next one. Mrs. Plum cut her left thumb while slicing tomatoes. One inch clean laceration noted on pad of thumb. Blood pressure elevated due to anxiety. Hypertension is stable. Trouble getting the bleeding to stop due to anticoagulant therapy. Five stitches given with neosporin powder applied to wound. Compression dressing used. Clindamycin 300 milligrams. One twice a day for seven days. Sent to pharmacy. Tylenol for pain. Return in seven days for stitch removal. Signs of infection um, uh, form given. Jill says, would you consider acute uncomplicated illness with over-the-counter uh, for 99213? Well, I can tell you I'm going to look over at my MDM matrix. And so you're saying a, uh, let's see, an acute uncomplicated illness that would be acute uncomplicated illness would be a three, correct? But you also have to have two of the three in the medical decision making. And if you cannot get two of three uh, where you have number of complexity, that's acute uncomplicated. Now we're talking about the previous one, by the way, guys, let me go back this one. Then did we uh, have a review of private external notes? A unique source? No. Uh, review test results? No. Order test results? No. Uh, assessment requiring an independent historian? Uh, you could call the mother maybe an independent historian, you know, maybe. Uh, but that would be amount of complexity and data. I'm going to say no. Uh, then you, to get to a three, you have to have, uh, let's see, uh, low risk additional diagnostic testing or treatment. No, none of that was done. So it it would be a two. You've got you can't get two out of three of those levels, Jill. That um, is uh, why we would decrease that to a two versus a three. Uh, all right, back to the E and M one. Thank you for asking that, Jill. Uh, okay, so now we look. Mrs. Plum has a cut on her thumb. Now, when we go to look at something that is going to be considered uh, a level four, is what I said this one was going to be. With it being a level four, what are we looking for? First thing we ask ourselves: How many diagnoses did the uh, provider address? Well, we have a laceration, the patient has hypertension, and the patient's on an anticoagulant therapy. So we have three, three diagnoses that the patient is looking at. Now, keep in mind, we don't have all the other information we're, we're basing this. So we could say, well, what if, or maybe, no, no, we're basing it on what we, we see here. Uh, and so there's three diagnoses. So that's two or more. That, that's a little dividing sign uh, uh, on leveling, two or more. And then uh, a procedure was performed. That bumps it up automatically. Uh, and uh, 
they uh, also uh, gave a prescription that bumps it up medical decision making. So when you look at the number of um, diagnoses, three or more, did uh, did the provider have to do any other tests or uh, check for anything else? Yeah, well, they, they didn't have to do a test, but they absolutely did a procedure. They stitched the finger up and uh, they wrote a prescription. So it bumps it up to a four. It's not a three. Now, even maybe, maybe a person that had cut their thumb and um, had stitches, you could say if there was nothing else going on, that it could be a three. Okay. But the fact that the patient's on an anticoagulant therapy and the patient has hypertension and it's stable, um, uh, that it was mentioned. So therefore you get to count those and that uh, makes the level go up. Yes, Alex, you can watch this. Uh, our CCO Live stay up on YouTube. So uh, feel free to jump in and watch this again as many times as you need. And don't forget, you can go into the club and uh, ask questions regarding these type of scenarios anytime you want. All right. Anybody disagree with this being a level four? I'm curious as uh, to if you would think that that is not a level four. And the reason it's not a five is it's just not a severe enough uh, complexity. You know, so um, as long as everything is stable, it, then you can't go into a five. You know, fives are for really complex patients. And this isn't a complex patient. Um, uh if there was, you know, something, uh, say, gosh, I don't know, even a cut finger, a, a, an autoimmune, I mean, immune disorder, they're going through cancer treatments, uh, they get infections, you know, maybe you could get into a five, but again, we just have a, a cut thumb and a, yeah, an inch laceration there on that part of the thumb is pretty significant. However, it, um, and is anticoagulant theory part of the stable chronic problem? Absolutely, it is. It's stable. And even though they get a little bit of, it's just common knowledge that if you're on Coumadin, then you're going to bleed more. But, uh, you know, if, if you read the, you know, the rest of the report, if they talk about how, you know, they really had trouble getting that to stop bleeding. Well, the only reason that that would be really concerning, is, I mean, if they were just you know, bleeding out and they're not. Uh, plus, uh, your blood is thinner when you're on Coumadin. So, of course, you're going to bleed more, but it also just looks worse. <laughs> you ever have to say, it's like, oh, that person's on Coumadin. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, Isabel, that is a stable condition. Uh, EDC analyzer also helps us verify level of care. Oh, okay. That's great. So, uh, again, see what we did. How many diagnoses were they stable, chronic, you know, complex? Uh, and uh, what did the provider have to do about it? Very good. Let's jump over to the next one. I have to tell you guys, I feel a sneeze coming on. I hope I don't sneeze. But if I do, I probably won't have time to mute myself. So, uh, you, you know, be prepared. If you see me start to sneeze, you want to protect your ears. All right. Next, this one is a level three. Now I find that the most complicated areas with e and and leveling has always been from a three to a four and back and forth. You know, what do we need to do to decide what's a three and what's a four? Now in the past, it was a lot more difficult than it is now. It's really much easier to do it now. And I'm going to give you some examples at the end, how uh, you can determine those uh, quicker. So we have Miss Birdie is 38 years old and comes in today for possible fracture of left wrist. Through her ASL interpreter, so she's deaf, she indicates that she was in the backyard and tripped over water hose. She caught herself with her left hand because she was carrying a flower pot in her right. I reviewed the x-ray and noted no fractures. Extremity is swollen and discolored. Significant hematoma on the top of the hand, which is odd. Uh, pulse and capillary refill, good. Removable splint applied. If pain does not go down after 48 hours to return for additional x 
x-rays after swelling resides. Patient refused pain medication as she is worried about addiction, uh, over-the-counter medication discussed, and ice therapy. All right. We really don't have an official diagnosis, right? We don't have that information to say, but we know it's a uh, hematoma, strain, sprain type uh, scenario, no fracture. Uh, no prescription was was written. A prescription, you know, pain medication was going to be offered. Uh, however, the patient refused that. Now, with that being said, uh, a couple things are in here to make you pause and think. So uh, do you guys agree that this is a three or do you think it's a four? Uh, I'm curious what your thoughts are. Uh, one, we need to always ask ourselves first is how many diagnoses are we dealing with? One. We have one diagnosis. Okay. And Cynthia says, yes, level three. She agrees with a level three. Um, Brenda also agrees with the three. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's see. Patricia agrees. Now one diagnosis is it, uh, it's an acute diagnosis, uh, injury, and, but that really one acute uncomplicated injury or illness is a three. And then um, they didn't have to cast it. They did do a test. They did an x-ray, right? So that's the, that's two areas. Now, what some people, Yvonne, Aya, Nell, Vanessa, everybody's agreeing. That's great. So uh, a, a few things that trip people up when they're new to ENM. They start reading into the possibilities. The fact that the patient has an interpreter, that makes some people say, oh, well, they're an uh, independent historian. They, they could, you know, no. Do not consider uh, an interpreter is not uh, an ASL uh, interpreter for uh, American Sign Language, Brenda. So this patient's deaf. Well, just because they're deaf is not an additional diagnosis. Just because they have an interpreter doesn't mean that they needed an independent uh, uh, historian. Uh, when a patient has a translator, it, is, it makes them one. So you cannot use that as needing, you know, an independent historian. And that's why I picked this. I wanted to see if any of you guys thought, oh, wait, no, no, don't they get a, don't they get something for that? No, no, they're one in the same person when that happens. Also, um, the fact that the provider was going to write a prescription, so the intent was, but the patient refused. So does the provider uh, get credit for wanting to write the prescription and the patient not? Uh, you know, the intent was to write a prescription. So do they get a point for, you know, uh, a level for that? No, they don't. The patient said no. So they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to think about what medication to give them. Uh, and if it counteracted with anything else that they were taking. So again, we can't bump up with that either. And uh, there's nothing here that would allow us to, to go from a three to a four. Uh, uh, one diagnosis, it, a diagnosis, it's acute, but it's not um, complicated. Uh, even, and sometimes they'll say, oh, it was, you know, a hematoma swelling. There's something else going on. Mm, capillary refills in the pulses and pulses and are all, all good and stable. So no, it is not complex. Um, they have a sprained wrist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so very good. This would be a three and all of the information that is uh, above and beyond that about, you know, how it happened. They trip, they carry a flower pot, blah, blah, blah. That's fodder. That really doesn't apply. Now, it does apply if you're grabbing diagnosis codes. <laughs> you know, that's different. Uh, but you know, it does not apply as far as the medical decision making for what's going on with this patient. And I can tell you, for those of you out there that are students that are trying to understand EM, really narrow focus uh, on how many diagnoses the patient has, what, uh, it, how complex are the diagnoses, and then number three, what is the provider going to do about it? Okay. 
we've answered those in the scenario. Let's move on to the next one. All right. Uh, now we have Colonel Mustard. Do you get a theme here? Do you guys recognize these names that I use sometimes? Colonel Mustard, Mrs. Plum. If you guys know who I'm referencing, put it in there. Let's see. Isabel says, if the patient accepted a prescription, we could use the uh, four, right? Yeah, you could. You could bump it up with the four. That is, Isabel, good point. Yep, Clue, you, Brenda, Yvonne, Tiffany, you guys got it. Uh, it's really hard to come up with names when you redact stuff or when you're making up scenarios. So to be able to um, pull something from like Clue, one of my favorite movies, I watched it again not too long ago. Uh, all right, so Colonel Mustard is here to establish care since moving from Colorado. He's brought his records and I've reviewed his, reviewed his chronic conditions with him. At this time, his main concern is the pain in his fingers and wrists. He thinks it is arthritis, no recent trauma or injury, joints swollen upon inspection. He has been using liniment uh, for the pain, but it's not working anymore. And so that's the kind of the main HMP, then the diagnoses that are reviewed, new diagnosis of uh, osteoarthritis uh, in the hands, start a leave, which is over the counter. Uh, uh, let's see, hypertension stable on the Cinepril. Uh, hyperlipidemia was elevated on last labs that he reviewed. Lipid panel ordered. Uh, type 1 diabetes stable. He has a Dexcom, which is one of those things you put in your arm that you can check your blood sugars on your phone. Uh, A1C has been ordered. History of prostate cancer treatment completed in 2016 brilliant documentation by the provider, flu shot requested and given, does not need refills at this time. So, you know, he, he came, recently moved in from another state, we're assuming, and that um, he's got current refills, being, you know, probably transferred his refills, he's established care, so when it's time, he'll be able to go and get refills again. Um, so what are our questions we have to ask ourselves? How many diagnoses is the provider uh, looking at? So we have an, one, osteoarthritis, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, and um, history of prostate cancer. Now, you say, wait, 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 history of prostate cancer is not a new, you know, it's not a current diagnosis. Well, the fact is, is that he reviewed the information about the prostate cancer and saw that it was, you know, in the past, but that also is part of the medical, uh, 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 let's see, medical decision making. This patient has had prostate cancer in the past. It was 2016. He will continue to check for malignancies and re or metastasis and um, other conditions that could uh, become problematic after having had cancer. So that does, you know, include. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five diagnoses that we have on there. Alex says, quick question, do referrals to a specialist or referral to podiatry count towards medical decision making? Yes, it does. It absolutely does. A specialist uh, referring a patient to a specialist stating why uh, so uh, this particular one could say, you know, uh, history of prostate cancer. If the patient still had concerns, then uh, referral to your uh, a urologist. Yeah. Uh, Yvonne says, oh, I missed the prostate cancer. So yeah, five things. Now, some people would say, well, you don't have to count the prostate cancer, Yvonne, because it's in the past. But the fact is, is the provider reviewed that the history of is a diagnosis and it states treatment was completed in 2016, but they still are considering it in part of their medical decision making. So uh, very, very good. All right. So we have five diagnoses. What are they doing about it? Or, or wait, wait, complexity. We'll do complexity next. Uh, we have a new diagnosis that bumps the complexity up. Uh, we have ordered tests two tests, lipid panel and A1C. Uh, and uh, they also gave a flu shot, which that would be a uh, modifier, you know, on there and uh, as a procedure and stuff. The So uh, again, 
that is uh, still something else that was done is the provider still had to look and say, oh, okay, yeah, you haven't had your flu shot. And yes, you, uh, we, we can provide that for you here, but that's not a diagnosis. That's a, something you're doing to the patient. So uh, again, the, the, how complex is it? Whenever you have a new diagnosis, that bumps that complexity up. Now, if we had uh, five diagnoses that they were managing and all of them were stable and no prescriptions were being, you know, that still bumped us up because if you go in and look, um, let's see, even at a three, it would be two or more uh, self-limited or minor, you know. So when you get into, uh, uh, it would be a four with two plus stable chronic illnesses. So we have more, we have five, uh, but we have four uh, that we're going to say is uh, they're not stable. So the hypertension is stable, that's one, and the diabetes is, is stable, but he orders an A1C, okay, but he did not, but he stated it was stable, so two stable diagnoses, and I'm not going to count the prostate cancer as stable because uh, we're not going to, um, we're going to take that away, uh, but they have a new diagnosis, that bumps it up. And we ordered um, labs because the the hyperlipidemia was elevated. And so therefore, we're ordering a test. So what did they do? That one over-the-counter medication now, we're going to the next step. So what is the doctor going to do about it? Uh, we've ordered two tests. And um, so you you can't get into a high. You can't get into a five because there's no, no emergency here, pretty much. Uh, this is... Everything is relatively stable, and what's not is not complex. So uh, Isabel says, if the doctor didn't ask further about the history of cancer, would that still be coded? Um, no, you're going to code it, period. Now, if, no, 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 let me rephrase that. If the doctor didn't ask further about the history, the fact that it was stated in the documentation, it would be coded. Okay. Now don't get confused. You know, there's a um, risk adjustment. You would code it. Absolutely. You would count it. But the fact that it was stated and in the assessment and plan, it gets coded. He had to think about it. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. We're at a four. Uh, we're above a three because we have five. We order tests. One is a new diagnosis. One is um, elevated, so it's not stable, right? And uh, but nothing is really complex, you know. Uh, uh, just ordering tests to, to see where they're at. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we've got next. We're going to talk about the key components. What I wanted to do is kind of give you out shout out phrases. If everything is stable, you're a two. You're a two and maybe a three. If you have an exacerbation of anything, you're probably going to be a four. If you have one acute and two stable chronic conditions, it's a three. If you have severe exacerbation, it's a five. Right. So these are just little takeaways that you can use to tell yourself. So what are the key things to consider? The first thing, how many diagnoses? The second thing is uh, the uh, complexity of those diagnoses. The third thing is what are they doing about it? How complex or what, it, what do we have to do about it? But those key phrases and statements, you're looking for stable, if they're acute and uh, you can have acute, but you don't want multiple acute. If you have multiple acute new diagnoses, then that bumps it up to a four. But if you have even one acute and two or more stable, that's still a three if it's not complex. Uh, but if you get any, if you ever see exacerbation written anywhere, that automatically bumps you up to a four. OK, so let's talk about this box here. Let's go back 
to the ones that we were talking about and let's kind of work through them in our heads. So if you have a common cold and the treatment is over-the-counter medication, what do you think you're going to be? We know that it's going to be, it's not going to be a five. It's not going to be a four. Is it going to be a three, two, or one? Does anybody want to shout it out? Uh, what they think it? Yep. Brenda says two. She nailed it. Yeah, it's going to be a two. Common? No, it's not complex. Yep, everybody's nailing it now. Right, a two. One thing, and it's not complex, and the medical decision making is not complex. So it's a two, not a three, Suzette. Why? Why? Let me know why you think it might be a three. Uh, it, it, because I want to know what your thought process is. Maybe you're thinking of something that I'm not seeing. Vanessa, why do you think it's a three and not a two? Let me know uh, so that I can make sure we're on the same, because maybe I'm missing something. And while I'm doing that, I'll take a little sippy sippy here. So I don't have a sneezing fit. I'm curious as to... Um, uh, what a common cold with over-the-counter med. So how many diagnoses do we have? One. Is it, um, what's the complexity of it? Very low because it's just over-the-counter medication. And what's the medical, you know, what's, what are they doing about it? They're not doing anything about it. So Alex says, if they did a respiratory panel, wouldn't it bump it to a level three? Yes, it would. If they did a um, nebulizer treatment, it would bump it up to a three. But the way it is now, with only we knowing that it's a cold and um, uh, over the counter, it's a two. Tell me what you're thinking, um, Suzette and Vanessa, and let me know. So, that, so we'll move on to the next one. I know you may be typing a lot. Okay, uh, next one. Oh, I'm over her assuming. Well, um, possibly. Yeah, I see what you're thinking. You're you're just thinking through the process. Got it. Um, osteoarthritis, over-the-counter medication. So we know it's not a five. We know it's not a four. Is it a three or a two? Uh, oh, Yolanda says, well, why wouldn't it be a one? Well, a one, you're not even really seeing the provider. So they actually saw the provider, so there are two. Good question, though, Yolanda. Very good question. But with a one, it's one self-limited or minor uh, amount of complexity, none or minimal. Risk uh, for diagnosing or straightforward. No, they, they um, uh, let's see. Examples that they use for low, that would be a three, would be well-controlled hypertension, non-insulin diabetes, cataract, benign prostate hyperplasia. You know, so it, it is an acute, uh, it's one acute uncomplicated injury or illness. So an acute cold is is acute. Yep, Yolanda, uh, Alanda, usually you're seeing the nurse with, um, with a one. Yeah. Vanessa. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, we're on the next one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So osteoarthritis over the counter medication. Uh, what would call, um, even, okay. In the past, if they saw the nurse to have stitches removed, that's a one. If they want their blood pressure checked, that's a one. Mm -hmm. Review of, um, their blood pressure log, that would be a one. Yeah. Good question, Isabel. So, so osteoarthritis over-the-counter uh, med, what would, um, what, it, it, it is, everybody is saying that they think it's a three, and I'm thinking that it's still a two. Tell me what the difference in the common cold over-the-counter medication and osteoarthritis with over-the-counter medication is what what would be different except for one is an acute and one is a stable chronic so that would still be a three and then um uh, the and low risk 
So I'm thinking that osteoarthritis with over-the-counter medication would still be a uh, uh, a two. What do you guys think? Do you, do you still think it would be a three? Still one diagnosis and over-the-counter. Brenda, that's what my thinking is too. I thought osteoarthritis would be considered a stable chronic. It is a stable chronic, and that is a 99213. If you can get two of the three. So we have stable chronic uh, and it's well controlled. So we would get a two. Yeah. Now, if the patient had RC arthritis and was having a flare, then maybe you could bump it up, it, uh, you know, stuff like that. Or what if uh, they had osteoarthritis and the provider was saying, you know what, this this may not be osteoarthritis. This is starting to look like rheumatoid arthritis. Um, let's let, let's do run some blood work. That bumps it up to a three. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, all right, diabetes, asthma, uh, diabetes and asthma stable. What are we thinking? Do you, it's not a five. It's not a two. It's either a three or a four. Diabetes and asthma stable. Uh, okay. This one is a little more complicated because, uh, because we are not given any information that a prescription was done. We don't know that any tests were reviewed or, or anything was ordered. Uh, it is true that if you look at the, the, um, the um, leveling thing, two, two or more stable chronic illnesses, okay? But you can't, you've got to meet two of the three things. So how many diagnoses? We have two. Oh, okay. That could mean a three or a four. And then um, uh, how complex are they? Well, not complex. Well, you think diabetes is complex. Well, it is, but it's stable. And we're not getting a prescription. We don't know anything else. So that is low. And um, uh, what's the doctor going to do about it? Nothing. So we cannot be a four because we have to meet three. We have to meet two of the three and we can only meet one of the three. You have to meet or exceed the criteria in the column. How many diagnoses? Two. Okay. So that could be a three or a four. Uh, did, are they complex? Mm, no. They're, they're chronic, but they're stable. And... Did the doctor do anything about it? No. So you have to make two, uh, you have to have have uh, two or three. And so have, uh, let's see, two uh, self-limited or minor, one stable chronic uh, or, uh, and well-controlled because they're stable. No, nope. you're going to get a three. You, you can't get a, a four out of it. Mm-hmm. Kind of cool, hi. Huh? Ooh, Shivanji. I don't know if I pronounced your name. I'm glad that you're here. Oh, right. Uh, question. Do you think over-the-counter medications, recommendations count as prescription management? Um, no, I don't. So the scenario would be, uh, think, cerumen in the ears, and the provider says, hey, go get the, the they sometimes tell them to put stool softeners in their ears. And then uh, Isabel says, I'm confused. Okay, remember, they got to get two of the three in the column. So you're writing two, uh, three columns there, three things you got to ask yourself. And you've got to be able to get two of those fingers uh, to be able to go to the next level. So it's meet or exceed. All right, well, let's try another one, okay? So let's go to COPD. Hypertension, CKD, or stable labs ordered. What do you think that is? That's a four. Why? Two or more 
chronic, how many chronic conditions? We have three chronic conditions. They're stable. Okay. So, what, so, you know, are they complex? No, they're not complex, but they ordered tests. So now you have two of the three and you can get into a four. Mm -hmm. They not ordered tests, it would still be a three, but they ordered labs. So that automatically lets us bump up. All right. Now, again, we're really making this kind of, uh, uh, you know, there's other scenarios. Don't tell yourself what if. Only think about what you information you're given. Uh, let's go on. Next one. Diabetes with hypoglycemia. That is how many diagnoses? One. Is it complex? Yes. It's complex, it's diabetes, and it's having complication, hypoglycemia. Doesn't say what they're gonna do about it, but you've already met two of the three. Two of the three, so that's a four. That would be the equivalent of saying there's an exacerbation to the diabetes. So one, di how many diagnoses? One, okay. It's chronic, but it's complex because it's a complication. What are they doing about it? Well, we don't know, so we can't count that. But if we know that they would order a test, but still, the that that becomes a four. Next one, new CKD diagnosis: CHF and hypertension stable. Oh wait, that was on the other bullet. Okay, sorry. Let's go back up. Diabetes with hyper hypoglycemia. New CKD diagnosis, CHF and hypertension stable. Ooh, sorry, I didn't see that. I thought that was another uh, bullet with the new diagnosis. Of um, So uh, we have how many diagnoses? One, two, three, four. Four diagnoses. Uh, how uh, you have uh, two of them are uh, higher complexity because one's new and one's got a complication and two are stable. So that gives you four diagnoses. Now you cannot get into a five and let me tell you why, because they're not showing you what they did about it. But for, for it to be a five, you need one chronic illness with severe exacerbation, progression, or side effect of treatment, or one acute or chronic illness posing a threat to life or bodily function. We're, we're not there yet. However, on a four, you have two plus stable, yes, but you've got um, undiagnosed new problem with uncertain prognosis, new CKD. You have a diabetic that's now a CKD patient? That is elevating. That's a complexity of diabetes plus hypoglycemia plus CHF and hypertension to get together. So really, um, I would not classify that as, uh, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's an exacerbation. I would say the complexity is higher. So I would still rate that as a four. Yolanda says a five. Now, if, we knew what tests were being done. Uh, the fact that they're not here is kind of uh, bad, but, um, you know, absolutely, if they had referred to uh, renal uh, and um, uh, with diabetes, the hypoglycemia referred to endocrine. And again, I'm going through these with the prospect that these are all family practices. Uh, and stuff. So y Yolanda's thinking of five. I'm going to still say it's a uh, four because it's not a severe exacerbation. It's hypoglycemia, but it is a new diagnosis. And so um, it says one, uh, let's see, uh, one chronic illness exacerbated and two stable chronic illnesses uh, under let's see, underdiagnosed new problem with uncertain prognosis, not, you know, uh, so still those fall in the fours. Yeah. So I would go with a four. If we had all of the information and we knew what they were doing with the, uh, then we could probably maybe get it into a five, but, um, 
I would say most likely not. We're still probably at a four. All right. What about stroke without residual? What are you guys' thoughts on that? Stroke without a residual mean no side effects. Yep. Miley says a three. I agree. It, it, it's a... Uh, it's a three. And the reason I would say it's a three, Yvonne, I know you said two. And the reason I would say it's not a two is that when a person has a stroke or has had a stroke, if this is the visit for after the stroke, the doctor is going to be looking at a lot of documentation and reports about the stroke and making medical decision making goes up because obviously this patient is going to be put on medications. They're probably going to be on anticoagulant therapy now and stuff. So they're going to be a three, uh, how not a two, but if they had anything else going on, then we might bump them up to a four, but I could tell you that it's going to be a three. And then they reviewed prior external notes from uh, unique sources, review of tests. All of that is two. So how many diagnoses? One. How complex? Mm -hmm. It's not complex, but what did the provider do about it? They had to read a lot of documentation if it's a follow-up of a recent stroke, even though there was no residual. Yeah. Uh, even if it's stable, yes, Yvonne, because we, and again, we're making an assumption here without the note, but we know that if we set the scenario that this is a patient that comes in and sees their provider after the stroke and they have no residual, they're doing fine, that provider is going to spend a lot of time reviewing that record, the patient's records, and talking to them and educating them. However, now, Yvonne, how it might be a two is if the patient is just coming in for whatever uh, they've not, they don't have anything else gone. The uh, previous stroke was six months ago, and that that's all that's wrong with the patient. There's nothing else wrong with the patient. That would be a two. Okay, so let's say with the information we're given, probably a two because we. Uh, with your thought process, my thought process is, okay, if this is a, the first visit after a stroke, it's going to be a three. So again, we could be both right. Uh, hopefully that being said, it helps you to determine uh, what you need to think about when you see these scenarios. Okay. Yvonne makes another point. Depends on the length of time since the stroke makes sense. And how long did they spend the time with the patient? This might be a scenario where um, they do it based on time and not medical decision making, because not only do they review the notes, but they have to educate the patient and answer all their questions about, hey, I had a stroke. Am I going to have another one? And, you know, is this going to kill me? Is this going to, you know, what do I need to look for? Uh, the residual, what are late effects, what are sequelas, all these words that I heard. So in this scenario, in the real world, if that's all that was going on, the provider would probably base it on time, not medical decision making. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see for, yeah, time spent with documented. Yeah, Cindy, time spent documented and stuff. So you got to have the time documented for them to use that. Uh, yep. All right. So let's see. Fractured toe. What do you think about a fractured toe? Let's give you more scenarios. Let's say it was a 17-year-old um, uh, 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 male football player, and he uh, was goofing around uh, and tried to kick the ball, tried to kick a field goal in practice without his shoes on, and he broke his big toe. What do you think that would be? So how many diagnoses? One. Is it complex? Well, yes. It's complex because you got to do something about a fractured toe. Now, usually they'll just tape them together. Uh, however, uh, again, the how many times now do they send him off to an orthopedist to go look at it, right? Uh, if he's a football player and he's healthy and and stuff. Maybe they may just, but they did an x-ray. 
or they wouldn't know that it was a fractured toe. So, um, yeah, we're, we're looking at a three for him. And, uh, uh, now let's change it up. Let's, let's assume something here just real quick. What if this is a 75 year old that got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom because they have prostate cancer and they pee all the time. And they're also a diabetic and they broke their toe. That is going to change the leveling, right? So the fact that we don't have any more information, uh, we can only make assumptions. But if you have a fractured toe, you know that you're going to be a three or four out the gate, right? Because tests are being done and stuff like that. And most likely it's a four because they're going to do an x-ray. You're right. They're going to give them pain medication, you know, and, and we're making a lot of assumptions. But anytime there's a fracture that elevates the uh, complexity and uh, what the provider is going to do about it. So uh, keep that in mind. And last, uh, we'll say a new diagnosis of diabetes in a patient. A new diagnosis of diabetes elevates, right? It is a complex uh, whether they're going to treat it with medication or diet or exercise or so. So with a new diagnosis, um, let's see, uh, we are looking at one undiagnosed new problem with uncertain prognosis. That's what I would say at a four. And uh, uh, I would say you're tipping three and four, but probably a four. Right. Because diabetes is a diagnosis that is just more complex. Now, if it's a new diagnosis of hypertension, three probably. And again, we're just thinking kind of uh, on the medical field, your background knowledge of what it is. A new diagnosis of diabetes. Hey, that takes a lot of education. That takes a lot of thought processes of, you know, what are we going to do? Are we going to do diet and exercise? Do we need to go ahead and um, uh, start you on medication? Uh, you know, family history plays a part in there, how fat you are, all this stuff. We don't have that information, but I'm, I'm saying probably you're going to get a four out of that if you have the rest of the notes, because diabetes is a complex uh, diagnosis, especially when it's new. Because what if I said a new diagnosis of Alzheimer's? Well, your brain automatically thinks, oh, four, 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 right? So again, think of it that way. And again, Cindy makes a good point. Time might be a factor there because a lot of education, a lot of reviewing of labs that were probably taken. You can't give them a new diagnosis of diabetes without having had labs done and reviewing those labs. So uh, again, we're, we're probably looking at a four regardless. I hope guys that this kind of overview of thought processes, how you look at e &M versus, oh my gosh, there's a, a leveler and I've got to check and count all this stuff. Kind of think of it in, um, you can't, you can't use information that's not in the documentation. Now, I've kind of made light of this, and this is kind of remedial in a lot of ways. We're making a lot of assumptions and stuff. But always remember, you have to go down to the basics. Three things. One, how many diagnoses? How complex are they? And what's the provider going to do about it? Ask yourself those three things. And when you do that, that's the three columns, right? And you should be able to kind of, Think that through just by two of those. You got to have two of those. You either have to have multiple diagnoses, it has to be complex diagnoses, or you got to be doing something about it, a lot of things about it. Okay. Uh, we're going to wrap up, guys. If you have a topic you would like us to go over and kind of unpack it like we did tonight, give scenarios, examples, walk through it, kind of do something live like this absolutely let us know the topic you would like us to cover uh, cco.us forward slash topic hyphen rest we look at your requests we always look at our students first then we look at the club members and uh, look at their requests and then all of uh, the outsiders that send topic requests and uh, if you want to be top of the list, then again, you can become a student with us. If you like the way that we educate, this is the way we do it across the board with the other credentials. 
go to cco.us, look at our courses. Uh, we have a great course on risk adjustment and um, uh, the medical coding. We also have a lot of products that just help you pass the tests, the credentialing exams. But we also have our fabulous CCO club, cco.us forward slash club, where we have discussions like this. And there's lots of uh, exclusive content in there and videos like this uh, uh, that might be helpful to you. Uh, and, and it's a nominal uh, cost every month. Uh, again, I hope you had fun. We have fun doing this. We really appreciate when you join us. And feel free to share and let other people know about us. We really don't advertise. And we would appreciate um, getting the word out if this was helpful to you. CCO.us, don't forget that. And if you're on whichever social media that you're using, you can splash it out there. Share it. Tell other people about us. And you guys have fun coding, have fun learning. We have fun educating. Thanks, guys. Bye. Our online medical coding course was created specifically for beginners to learn everything they need about medical coding. The course includes a personal coach, nine months of access, 24 7 online videos, transcripts, and exams. You can learn more about our medical coding course at www.cco.us forward slash pbc.